not a lot the American public agrees on in this election, except maybe this one thing. They don't view either major party presidential candidate favorably. Washington Post poll from over the weekend found more than half the country continues to dislike both candidates, 64% for Donald Trump, 53% for Hillary Clinton. So you'd think this would be the year of the third party candidate, right? But then came moments like these. Aleppo. And what is Aleppo? You're kidding. No. What's your favorite foreign leader? Who's my favorite? Any, just name anywhere in the country, any one of the continents, any country. Name one foreign leader that you respect and look up to. Anybody. <laughs> anywhere, any continent. Canada, Mexico, Europe over there, uh, Asia, South America, Africa. Name a foreign leader that you respect. I guess I'm having an Aleppo moment. Yeah. Do that because they are not your at the barred gates of American debates to say that we need to open up this debate. You refuse to move, you are subject to arrest. Remove them, bring them back to the How did so much opportunity come to so little? Joining me with the answers, I hope, are Evan Falchuk, founder and chair of the United Independent Party, which earned official status in Massachusetts after he ran for governor in 2014. Nice to see you, Evan. Neil Swidey, Globe uh, Magazine staff writer, whose recent pieces include two great ones. If Jill Stein is so smart, why does she keep running? And Bill Weld's return to politics is brief. That's all he can afford. Neil, it's good to see you, too. Thanks so much. Amen. So, Evan, it seems to me this should have been a year of the third party, it, almost perfect. Yep. Uh, why wasn't it? Why isn't it? Well, two reasons. One of them is the messengers. I think both of these candidates are just not, they're painfully out of their depth when it comes to being president of the United States. And then we have a really low level of voter engagement in this country. There's a lot of polls that show people want a third party, but the level of participation by voters these days is, is really, really low. Yeah, speaking of that poll, since I was going to put it up later, why don't I put it up now? Gallup puts up a poll. Look, in 2012, uh, it's a dead heat, 46 to 45, 30, third party needed. In 2016, and by the way, in fairness, this happened even before the Trump-Clinton disdain, for lack of a better expression, by a 20-point margin. Is it the messenger? Is it the message? What is it? I think people were ready uh, for a different option this time, and they were more open to trying. Remember, both these candidates, Gary Johnson and Jill Stein, ran in 2012 and really didn't make much of a blip. Uh, this year, people said, hey, we don't like these two main candidates, it's, take, uh, it's time to take a look at the others. Uh, and when they looked more closely, I think that's where these candidates just didn't hold up to scrutiny. You know, your, your, piece, your piece on Weld, obviously our former governor, who's number two, assuming he's still running with Gary Johnson, who knows what he's doing. Okay. But the Jill Stein thing, can you explain the phenomenon? You, you lay it out. Ran for governor, ran for state rep, ran for secretary of state, ran for president, ran for governor again, or something like that. And then what is up with this? I mean, it's sort of like retread city. If she really believes in the movement, why doesn't she step aside and let somebody who has a chance of going somewhere? I don't get I mean, this. I mean, it's a question she, even as you know from that story, admitted yeah. to me that her, her siblings ask her the same question. Why are you still doing this? Uh, I think part of it is uh, this is someone who clearly lives in two worlds. In the one world, in the kind of professional established world, where she goes to meet with the Washington Post editorial board, and they can barely contain their snickering. You can see that mm. when you read the transcript. And in the other world, when she goes to these rallies, there's love in the room for her. There are people who get starstruck around her, and I think there's something uh, kind of uh, uh, attractive to a candidate for that reason. You know, I, I want to get back to your messenger point, because I happen to agree with you. I think this was the right time, and, and the mess, and by the way, I, there's a libertarian streak in America. I think there is, and a lot of the Green Party's agenda, while critics say it's some left-wing craziness, it's actually not that un-mainstream when you go down the list. Would Bloomberg have been, who was a messenger in 2016 that could have carried either banner? He would have been a better candidate, but this is the problem. Because he's a billionaire or because he can he's, talk? He's within the mainstream of okay. American political life. But the problem is you can't change the system and create a third party from the top down. You've got to build from the grassroots up. Winning a presidential election requires that you've got an organization all around the country, people out there ready to, to put aside their time to help your campaign. A candidate coming in out of, out of nowhere and saying, I've got the money, I'm going to run a campaign. You mean like Donald Trump, for example? Well, he did it within a party. He did it within the Republican Party. So while he doesn't have his own organization, that party does. Yeah. But it's probably why he's going to lose, is that he doesn't have that structure in place. Yeah, I want to talk to you about the, con at least seems to me to be a conflict. On one hand, we showed this poll a minute ago, why overwhelmingly people say a third party would be a good thing. And on the other hand, there's this notion, well, I'm going to be a spoiler if I vote for this person. Anderson Cooper, who is generally seen as the spoiler in chief because of 2,000, 90,000, 
50,000 votes in Florida. Gore loses by 500, rejects that whole thing. Here he is with Anderson Cooper on CNN last night. You'll notice that the two major party candidates never call each other spoilers. It's only directed to a third party candidate who's considered someone that takes votes away. Well, if we have an equal right to run for election under the Constitution and use our First Amendment rights, then we're all trying to get votes from one another. Yeah, he goes on to say, Evan, uh, uh, just having the voices of a third party in the process is enough to make frontrunners better candidates by evolving their platforms. Is that enough? I mean, you don't, I assume you didn't run, or did you, to make a point when you ran for governor. Right. You ran to win. To is win that enough? and to create the United Independent Party, right. which we achieved. But look, candidates have to get the votes that they need to win. They've got one job, and that's to earn the votes. And when you hear candidates complaining, well, there's too many candidates out there, imagine a business saying, it's not fair that I have to compete against all these competitors. Let's get rid of well, them. Much of the rest of the world does this quite well, apparently. They admittedly yeah. have different systems of government, this right. coalition. But thing. it's up to those candidates to get their voters. You know, did you see any of this when you saw the crowds for either, or, or at least their travels, you know, Weld walking down the street, uh, Stein, was there any concern about the spoiler thing? Because up until until at least a couple of days ago. Well, even now, uh, Johnson, despite, what, is, what did he say on MSNBC? Ignorance is an asset in foreign mm -hmm. policy, yeah, some insane yeah. thing like that. He's still in middle single digits, and in some states actually in low double digits. What did the people who were supporting them say about this whole spoiler It's thing? interesting. Even within their groups, uh, there's always someone who kind of tips toes to that line of, hey, you know, I, I could vote for you. Uh, I would like to vote for you, but this is probably not the year because given the, the prospect of Trump, as they would say, on there. And they, and they both have uh, rehearsed lines for that, which is, uh, you know, the, which is the same thing that, that Ralph Nader has said, which is, you know, these are both corporate parties, and this is the only way to break this stranglehold. On so, them. Evan, let me say something nice to you and then something mean. Is that mm. okay? We'll start with a nice. That's what you're going to say. Go you're a pretty it. good candidate, <laughs> Thank and you. you had a pretty good message. Mm. Uh, uh, you were not only not elected governor, uh, a couple of years later, you have one candidate yep. running in your party in the whole state. Right. If you don't get another, what, 20,000 signatures in the next week or so, your party's going to lose formal status. So if somebody does it right with a decent messenger in a state like this where 53% of the people yep. reject both parties, they're unenrolled, then maybe there's something else going on. We, we have a problem in our democracy. The Pew did a study in 2014 where they found that only 5% of voters had ever participated in a political campaign, 7% ever showed up to an event. You need those things to build a party. So unless voters decide that they're going to put action behind the nice notion of creating a party, we're going to continue to get what we end up deserving, which are candidates like the ones we've seen. Are you going to lose, the, you're not going to get to the 40 I, It doesn't look like we will. Um, we've got a small number of candidates, and that's not great. We had five people get elected, though, They've in 2015. Won, one on the, in the state legislature. We had five get elected in 2015 local, uh -huh. and, uh, and over 30,000 people enrolled. So I wanted to ask you both before you leave, is it possible? possible that the answer to these questions we've been discussing is this is just a two-party country. Well, it doesn't matter who they are, it doesn't matter what the message yeah. are, we are in the notion of two parties is ingrained in our souls. I think what we saw in this campaign year was you had two very unconventional candidates go through the main party route. One of them was Donald Trump and the other was Bernie Sanders and both got yeah. traction that nobody expected. So for now that may be the route in there to reform the house from within, from within. it. What do you think? I don't think it's naturally that way because we have all kinds of rules that keep people out. I think the media doesn't give third parties yeah. a fair shake. I mean, I, every time I walk in this building, I remember how I was excluded from the debate here on GBH. I was one of the decision makers. You were, thank you. you. By the way, and I mean, it is what it, it is. is it's but true, that's yeah. reality. Yeah. So we we have work to do in this country to get voters engaged. Evan, thank you so much. Thanks, Jim. Good luck, Neil. Terrific. Both pieces were Thanks. great.